name is Marin and today, as the title says, I will be sorting the various elite characters into the Hogwarts houses. I've seen people do this with different characters from different fandoms, most particularly there's an artist that I really love, Maya Art I think is her name, who's been doing them with the women of Marvel and I really really love like the whole concept, the idea. I'll link her stuff, her Instagram page down below because it is beautiful, like every, she, oh, just I could go on for days and days about it but it's so awesome so I got this idea after watching season three because like I'm going through an elite drought now obviously there was so much to watch and do and now we have no idea when season four is coming out or who will even be in it so I thought this would be a fun thing to do two caveats caveats before I get started one the, these are just what I think and for a lot of them I think that you could put them into multiple houses honestly. I think Hogwarts houses as I have gotten older you realize that it's very limiting only having four houses that are kind of based on four generic traits. <laughs> you know like people are more than one trait. So if I have a character in a house and you're like oh my gosh no I don't believe that like they should be in this house. You're probably also right. It's just I had to pick which one I felt was most valuable to that character and which one I could literally when I picture my eyes and the sorting hat goes on their little heads which one I could see our friend shouting out for the whole Hogwarts hall to hear. So that, you know, that's... And then kind of leading into that, caveat, caveat, the second thing is that I subscribe more to the theory that the Hogwarts sorting hat sorts you into the house that has the trait you most admire, not necessarily the one that you have the most. Uh, so keep that in mind when I'm sorting these characters because some of them honestly like might seem totally not like they fit that, but I'm going to try and explain why exactly they got in. I think that explains, you know, like why Sirius Black got into Gryffindor, even though his whole family was Slytherin, because he valued bravery and he valued what Gryffindor represented more so than what his family thought. So, just keeping that in mind, you know, obviously this isn't going to be perfect because it's just my thoughts and everyone has different opinions, but let's get started. So first up we have Gryffindor! And Gryffindor actually I feel like a lot of the characters could fit Gryffindor just because they've been through so many terrible things and have done some really interesting kind of schemes and cons to get their way out of certain things. So I feel like really we could realistically say maybe aside from like Polo, even though Polo more at the end of season three I could still guess you could say could all fit into Gryffindor. But I picked three characters in particular. First up we have Mr. Guzman. Guzman, he went through a rocky ride on the three seasons. And I should, before I get started deeper into this, I should mention this is going to have spoilers for season three probably. So just earmuffs if you haven't seen that yet. But Guzman really, I think, had a lot of growth over the three. He is very passionate, very quick to anger and quick to fight and defend. And he sees things as very black and white, good and bad, and I think that fits a lot of what Gryffindor is, because Gryffindor I think everyone thinks of as the typical good house, you know, like that's the house you want to get into to show that like you're a good person, even though, you know, obviously like Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff are also really good ones too. But I feel like especially in season three we saw him kind of become a more mature person and we saw him really be able to hold back his anger and kind of be more open to interpretations of there, there is gray in the world and things aren't always so black and white and we have to be open to that. So for that reason, I have decided that Guzman, because of how well he defends his friends and his family, I think he definitely belongs in Gryffindor. Going off of that, Guzman's new best friend, Sam, I think also belongs in Gryffindor. He represents a lot of the same traits I think Guzman does. And weirdly enough, I feel like we see him go on kind of an opposite trajectory than Guzman does in the three seasons in that he gets more passionate, he gets more quick to anger, quick to fights because he sees that the world isn't fair and like that rightly upsets him that it's like I can do everything right and I still lose and that absolutely sucks because it's just like the system has been rigged a certain way against him. So I think again he has that kind of Gryffindor bravery personality where he defends his friends, he doesn't stop looking for the truth, and he you know is kind of always ready. I think of Gryffindors kind of as like 
a little bit hot-headed in a way just because of how they're kind of like bravery is their thing like you think of like fights and like they're gonna do the right thing so I think that definitely encapsulates Sam and Guzman for me and then lastly we have my favorite girl my favorite girl and I was so happy to put her in this house Rebecca Gryffindor is my personal house like we definitely be roommates if we live there but I think Rebecca in season three especially we got to see just where exactly how loyal she is but also how good she is her mom doesn't lead the straightest of lives and while Rebecca kind of dipped her toes into that a little in season three after something happened with Carla and you know seeing what this life can lead to she really had a great speech at the end of the season three finale where she was like I'm tired of it all I'm tired of the secrets of lying of hiding from cops stuff like that and she really wants to go straight and I think she is definitely a person that is very loyal very there for her friends but also very brave and willing to do what she needs to do to help herself and her friends but definitely want to do it in the right way. And then moving on to my one of my favorite houses, Ravenclaw. I love Ravenclaw, guys. And I, I argued back and forth with myself if I should put Lou in this house. I feel like season three Lou would definitely be in Ravenclaw, but I'm looking at the encapsulation of all the seasons. So the only person that I put in Ravenclaw is, not surprisingly, Nadia. Nadia I feel like represents the uh, intelligence of Ravenclaw but she doesn't have exactly the cunningness to make it for Slytherin. Again I'm looking at what they value and I think while she did get kind of cunning and learn to play this game I don't think she necessarily values that in that she thinks it's like a good thing. I think she thinks it's useful when you need it but I don't think she sees it as something that she kind of values herself. So Nadia my girl off to Columbia she's in Ravenclaw all by her lonesome but you know she'll have a great relationship with Guzman and it'll be a Ravenclaw Gryffindor ship that we can all enjoy. Hufflepuff <laughs> now I put a lot more people in Hufflepuff than I thought and some of them was kind of because I feel like I didn't really know where else to put them but for most of them I do have a good reason. So first up I put Onder in Hufflepuff and I think Onder we really saw him try and keep the peace as much as he possibly could between Guzman and Polo as the seasons went on particularly in season two and season three and I think you know he felt really awful about Polo killing Marina and it really took a toll on him but he still at the end of the day and especially in season three wanted them to realize that life is so short and that there's bigger things to this and that they should all just kind of put aside their differences when it counts and I think that really encapsulates like what he wants to be. He wants to be kind of like the mediator and just doesn't like conflict. So I mean he is very cranky so you could argue that you know maybe you could put him in like more hot-headed house but I think overall like he just likes calm. He likes tranquil waters and that's him. Then going on to Anders better half in some cases. Omar. I put Omar in Hufflepuff because, you know, ignoring most of what happened in season three, I think Omar is a very empathetic person and he really wants to help his friends. You see him with Ander, you see him with Sam, you see him with Nadia, you see him with a lot of different people. He really is that friend that like wants to help you and cheer you up and I think that's what he values is he wants to keep the peace similar to on there but also just like, take your mind off things and make you happy and I think that's really great. Then the two boys that I I had such a hard time placing them guys I'm not gonna lie. Polo first of all. Polo I feel like you could put him in Slytherin because he did kill Marina but it was an accident and also he's not that cunning. Like the dude folded like a cheap lawn chair like 50 times throughout season two and season three. So I think really because of how much he wanted to go back to how things were and how he did do that for Carla and to try and protect her, I'm gonna put him in Hufflepuff. Just keep your eyes open if you live in Hufflepuff. Then I also have Valario. He was another one. I don't feel like there's a house that necessarily fits him and that's where the trouble of having four, only four houses comes into play. I honestly think he might do better at like the school that Victor Crumb is from or something like that. Like just like a different school. But I put him in Hufflepuff because I think again he went out of his way to talk to Cayetana and Polo when everyone else kind of hated them in season three. He had this great relationship. He was very caring of Cayetana and Polo up until they had their fight. And I just think the way he took care of Lou at the end of the season three finale really shows that he is very caring and empathetic, even if he hasn't had that in his life. And it just fit Hufflepuff to me. And then last but certainly not least, I have Slytherin. Now with Slytherin, I think people instinctively, because of how J.K. Rowling wrote it, think of Slytherin as bad. I don't though. I actually really like Slytherin. I think cunning is a very interesting 
value to have as your house and I think while unfortunately a lot of bad people have been like drawn to that house I don't think intrinsically it's bad I think cunningness can really be helpful especially depending on like the situation you're in and I think all three of the girls that I put on this list use their cunningness and their manipulativeness to help them further in bad situations for the most part sometimes they weren't great but I just think they value really cunningness and that's why I put them in this over maybe like Ravenclaw where I think Ravenclaw and Slytherin are very similar to me and that they both have that intelligence it's just what you decide to use it for and I think all three of these girls potentially could have been in Ravenclaw but I put them in Slytherin because of more like what their actions did so first up I have Carla Carla is we know the queen of manipulation as many people have said on the show even if she doesn't necessarily want to be I think it's just very interesting that she knows what people want from her and what people expect and for the most part aside from season three when they ruined her character honestly she is able to use that to kind of trick people and manipulate people but I think she definitely knows that like just being a rich girl that's all people sometimes see her for and she knows that she can use that to her advantage and kind of trick people and outmaneuver them that way. Second in Slytherin joining her her ex best friend friends slash they made up <laughs> Lou like I said I was torn between putting Lou in Ravenclaw just because of how smart she is and how intelligent she like really is you know but I think she does definitely value cunningness and she values that kind of using information we saw her in season three get the chance to use something to destroy Nadia and decide not to and I think even the speech that she had at the end of season three the amazing speech where she said like if I'm shaking if I'm crying if I don't know what to say it's because I have feelings, bitch. Like, that is Slytherin to a T. Like, it's just so, so good. And then I think you could also... I think Lou, like, is a mix of, like, Slytherin, Ravenclaw, and Gryffindor just because of how much she takes care of her friends. But at the end of the day, I definitely do think she's a Slytherin. Just not necessarily know that when I place people in Slytherin, I don't think that that means they're a bad person or a villain. <laughs> and then lastly, I have in Slytherin, Kayatana. Kayatana got in this category basically because I feel like she doesn't fit in any of the other categories necessarily like we didn't learn more about her character that makes you think she's super smart so I think she is just a master manipulator and we kind of saw it more in season two than in season three but she is able to spin these stories off the top of her head that are just amazing and grandiose in their detail and still be absolutely true like she was never tricked like I thought she was going to be by like tripping up on a story like she was always one step ahead of things with people aside from you know when Lou found out and I feel like that's again obviously like only a Slytherin could outmaneuver a Slytherin potentially but I feel like she just is very cunning and very very always kind of has these parts moving even I feel like her story when she was giving her um suspect to the police at the end of season three everyone else was kind of like had just like little stories or kind of were like blah 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 she had this whole concocted story about how like she knew what the time it was because she wanted to take her allergy medicine and then she was like oh I feel bad saying it like I can't say it and they were like who is it and she was like I think it was on like I saw on there and it's just it shows you I think that thing about her character that her wheels are always spinning and it's very very impressive to me so like I'm in awe of these three girls these three girls and Rebecca are like my fave on the show well I guess all the girls really like if they just banded together like they would be unstoppable so uh yeah that is that is what I feel the elite characters what their Hogwarts houses would be like I said there's a bit of you know people belong in different ones or like I feel like in the case of Valeria no he didn't really fit into one specifically so the great thing is if you don't agree you can say what house you think someone would belong in and why and especially like help me out with like Valario or Polo those were two I really struggled with and then I hope the Slytherin stuff makes sense too and that I'm not saying they're bad people I'm just saying that that's the trait they use the most to get themselves ahead and it's actually pretty impressive so yeah leave your thoughts on all that down below also what you thought of season three of elite also make sure to spit out thumbs up if you enjoyed it and i will see you guys next time bye